So what you're telling me that this today's date, the 14th of June 2023, I'm here at the palatial home of Major Francis Richards and his wife Daphne, and he's showing me a chair that was made at Camp Londonderry in the 1970s. Yep. That is before independence. Original. That is more almost 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 50 years ago, 40 some years ago. Original. 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 Oh my yeah. goodness. Yes. So 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 did you make it or? No, 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 no. It was made by one of the craft. Yeah, one of the, one of the um, carpentry uh, students. Yeah, one of the students. Uh, I think I, I, had, I had two. I, I mean, maybe so now forty. Maria. Let me ask you this question: So forty-four years after independence, when you look at this chair and its longevity, what is it? What do you think is the value of vocational education, like carpentry, masonry, craft work, for young people today in in, in the development process? I mean, this 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 product. Um, I think when when it was it was made, it was um, to showcase, like I said, the craftsmanship of the students at an the time, um, and it has it has stood the test of time. For one, um, and um, and it, it 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 actually testifies to the quality of the wood for one, mm -hmm. the design that that would have been been designed by um, by our very own. Major Johnson. Major Lyndon Earl Johnson, yeah. Commandant of the Cadet Corps, yeah, yeah. who was and also director of the original youth camp at London Derry. And, and the original youth camp, is, that's critical, the original youth camp. Because um, it, was, it was not just the Dominica product, a Dominica centric situation. Yeah. Original yes, yes. Is, is important. Um, and it is, it is well done, it's still sturdy. Yeah, I had another one. Uh, Maria must have taken the other one. Yes. But I just, I just had to preserve this, and that maybe that's the only um, Londonderry Youth Camp product. Yeah, the only one of its kind now, from that time, still, still visible, still strong. Yes. Still strong. Right? And, and major, you're talking about the original youth camp at Londonderry, which I think spanned from 1969 to about 1977, thereabout. Yeah. yeah. So pretty much up to the independence uh, year, yeah. which is 1978. Yeah, I mean, we are, as, as, as cadets, we were. It was almost mandatory for us to, to be part of the of the of the um, activities during summer camps and everything else, and that's where we we we, we made some really really good friends and um, friendships that endure to this day. Oh yes, oh yes, very much so. Very like much with so. people like uh, Crestrel Lawrence. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yes, oh yes. Um, um, Sam Major. Sam Major, Major Christopher Lawrence. Yeah, man. Dr. Sam Christian. Christian, um, Disney Lawrence, um, uh, Coffee. I'm trying to go back in time. Alan Paul. I, I'm, not, I'm not as good as you, Gabriel, in terms of memory, in terms of recall of the, of the guys. But, but I mean, you can almost see them, you yes, know. When you, when you meet them, you know where you saw them first. Yes, and Paul Joseph. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Only, only Manuel, Kazimi, Manny, yeah, Anthony Richards, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really cool. Smiley, Smiley Stewart. Uh, okay. No, no, not Smiley. Funny, 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 funny face. Funny, yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, one of the one of the, the one late, the, the late, the late great band bandsman and, and bass drummer, yeah. Neverson Sesha. Neverson Sesha. Um, Militas Pascal. Melictus Pascal. Ah, Melo. Melo oh, oh, on the man. side drum. Yeah, I mean, we had, we had some iconic guys um, coming out of that whole whole stuff. Guys you can never forget. Yes, because indeed. Because of, of their personality and all that. And all that you know? Yes, um, yes, yes. Yeah, they made some serious... Um, but, the, but the industry part of it, Gabriel, is, is something like that, that, we, that we... We need we to... Lost. We lost. And we yeah. need to recapture that. What is the value again, Major, mm. of that vocational education, that craftsmanship? For young Dominicans today. Well, the reality of life is that not all of us are all academically inclined, um, and um, and it's proven to be so over and over and over. So those persons who were who were uh, no, who are not academic academically inclined need to find a way to um, to to shine, and that's one of the things that um, in my in my time and under my my watch as the commandant of the, of the corps. I was trying to get to blossom because in, in, initially, Gabriel, that kind, that thought never really came through early. It's, it's, it's towards maybe towards the end of my time that that sort of vision came to to, to, to bear in that 
I, I began to, to, to think, okay, the, the, the core um, should not only be all about pomp and circumstance. Yes. So you're all dressed up and you're marching down there and, and um, the, you play to, to, to the band is playing and everybody is carrying a rifle and, 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 and we're out there. But then after, then what? Yes. When you put that away, then what? Yes. And I began to get into the area of... of, um, of um, Vocational education. Vocational edu education. Yes. And myself, and again, Gabriel, what is, I think is, is critical is that some of us don't know our, our potential until maybe later in life. Yeah. Or, I, or on the other hand, I'm saying that in, in every family, I, I want to believe, if you trace your lineage um, through the family, somebody, I think, in the family has something of unique benefit. Yes. And it may be craftsmanship, it may be music, it may be something in there that that um, some somebody, some someone in the line yes. will it, it will it will blossom in time. Yes, indeed. Right? And for and for me, my for me personally, my, my family, we have in our family we have we have woodworking, we have music, we have dance. Yes. Um, um, what else we have? We have agriculture. We have we have um, my, my father. He's 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 forty. Was stick stillering. stick stick a pin in that, uh, Major. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember I was a lawyer, maybe about two years, and I got a call one morning at about ten a.m. Mm -hmm. from someone from Illinois who was a top of harvest, a combine harvester, harvesting wheat. <laughs> Yeah, and that yeah. that was that was that was one Francis Richards who was then attending Wabash College in Illinois where you got a, your first degree in, in agriculture. And I want the, the listening audience, those who listen to this tape, to know that he later went on to distinguish himself oh, yeah, yeah, at Cranfield yeah. University in the United Kingdom, where he did a Master's of Science in Agriculture. You will, really, you will. Really. So, so you know, I, and and Francis Richards then was an employee of the. Uh, Ministry of Agriculture, the government of Dominica, yeah, working yeah. at the gardens yes, uh, and got involved in the essentials oil pro essential oils project yeah. that is extracting oil yeah, yeah, from the patchouli plant. Patchouli and the patchouli yeah, plant yeah. is a is a perfumed plant or mm -hmm. a plant that gives off a perfumed oil mm -hmm. when it's of course grounded. Uh, and that this same Francis Richards who I'm talking to, the former commandant of the Cadet Corps, also created a factory process or a mill. For the grounding of the plant and the distillation, Major, where did you learn that kind of sense of industrial? That kind of where did you acquire the industrial arts to do that kind of work? Well, yeah, well, this the, the, the history of that is, is quite interesting. In that, um, as as commandant of the corps, when Hurricane David struck in '79, I was then working as the as a customs officer at customs here at the, at Woodbridge Bay, in, 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 and. Um, when that time came, somebody said, well, why don't we try to find the cadets to help us clear and clear roads or whatever it is that they can do um, because they have that, that, they, that, that they're supposed to have, they're supposed to have that sense of discipline and organization. Somebody said, well, so yeah, okay, so what about, so this, this guy, Richards, why don't we go find him? And at the time, Gabriel, it just so happens that the the, the uh, chief agriculture officer at the time, um, Errol Harris, a former cadet, yes, um, at the grammar school, the Donker Grammar School, grammar school, grammar school. So which, he, which by the way, the Donker Grammar School is the legacy school of the cadet course, started there in 1910. Right, indeed. So he he immediately understood the potential of 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 that group of persons because by the time we had scouts, we had cadets, we had guides, we had brownies. Um, but as, a, as an organized discipline force, the cadets for him was the most natural thing. So they came, they came to find me at the <laughs> at the customs Gabriel. And Mr. Harris said to Mr. Um, Andre, who was then the that's um, the father of uh, Dr. Irvin Andre, the, the Canadian judge indeed. and author. Indeed, yes. indeed. Came to find, uh, asked Mr. Andre, well, is there any way we have, that we can loan loan Mr. Richards? to help us organize and um, maybe do some stuff for us uh, for, well, from, from the Ministry of Agriculture standpoint. Um, for the program, Sadri said, of course, because I, th I don't know whether himself was ever a cadet or he may have been. Have, he he, have he could have been, because I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. In the days that Andrew went to, to grammar school mm -hmm. before the war mm -hmm. or during the war, mm -hmm. 
every grammar school student had to be a cadet. You right. know who I learned that from? Right. No less a person than H.L. Christian, my uncle, Indeed. who was at the grammar school. He said every grammar school student in the right. 1930s, when he was there, right. had to be a cadet. Right. So Andrew would have been around that time. Right. So so he, he had no problem. He said, okay, fine. Given I left customs, got into Mr. Missionary Culture, Mr. Harry says, uh, Mr. Richards, follow me. Um, when I arrived there, I didn't know what, what I was going to be doing at all. Um, but by then, they had received some assistance, foreign assistance for, um, for, 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 for material items to assist in the clearing post Hurricane Maria, um, David, right? And, and, and then, so he said, follow me. I followed Mr. Harris down, down a, little, a little path um, to a, a building, opened the door, and in there, Gabriel, is a mountain of chainsaws, different sizes, chainsaws inside of it. That's the first time I was exposed to chainsaws, because I had no business in chainsaws prior to that. Yes. They all, and, all, and of course, after Hurricane David, there were a lot of fallen trees all over the country. Oh, yeah, all over the place. And here we had our own, I mean, I, I, I got to know a venerable um, 